Good evening, everyone. Please rise to welcome the Dean, distinguished guests, faculty, and graduates of Columbia University's School of International and Public Affairs.
Good evening, friends and family. Please take your seats. Please welcome our distinguished Dean, Thomas J. Christensen. Good evening, distinguished faculty, students, alumni, family and friends, and honored guests. It's my pleasure to welcome you to the graduation ceremony for the School of International and Public Affairs, Class of 2022. We're really excited to be celebrating this momentous occasion with all of you in person on a beautiful night. Uh, it's a big change and we're very happy about it. Graduates, congratulations. I, I can't tell you how proud we are, we, every, everybody up here is of all of you. And uh, I would be remiss if I didn't now turn our attention to some of the people that made this day possible. The family and friends who joined us today, they were a big part of this process, so please let's give them a hand. And please join me in thanking our distinguished faculty and staff. Uh, these are the people who guided you through your rigorous SEPA experience. Um, they're all behind me, uh, especially the ones who joined us today. Um, thank you. That SEPA experience has prepared you to lead in tackling, tackling the world's most challenging problems, climate change, international and domestic conflict, social inequality, economic instability, and humanitarian crises. I think this is a historic class. I know you're not going to believe, believe me when I say that, um, because it's my job to say great things about you. But I think you're a historic class, and I'll describe why. This school was founded in 1946, right after World War II. And there have been students at SIPA who studied under very difficult international and domestic circumstances during their studies, but I think few classes have been as steeled by world and domestic events to be prepared to be global leaders as the class of 2022. And there have been a few notable classes that you joined. And I think of the early classes at SIPA in the late 1940s, as they watched the Cold War form, and that would determine international politics for decades to come. I think of the classes of 1968 and 69, who studied here during the height of the Civil Rights Movement in the United States, the murders of Dr. Martin Luther King and Bobby Kennedy, and the social turmoil of that era. I think of the class of 1992, who studied during the collapse of the Soviet Union and the end of the Cold War. And I think of the class of 2002, who studied during the September, 9th, the September 11th attacks on New York, Washington, and Pennsylvania. The class of 2009, who studied during the financial crisis. And now you, I think you're one of these classes, the class of 2022. You faced a persistent, devastating global pandemic. It's taken millions of lives around the world. It's reminded us all of our interconnectedness and the need for sound leadership. You've seen the brutal invasion of Ukraine by Russia that threatens to create a new Cold War. It's created a major humanitarian crisis as well as regional and global instability. And it demonstrates many of the things you've studied in your classes, that military security, economic security, and hum human security are all wrapped together. In the United States, you witnessed a direct threat to US democracy and our cherished electoral process while you were students here. You also witnessed a profound reckoning on longstanding issues of racism and inequality in American society. You came to SEPA to develop the training, the knowledge, and the tools to take on these types of challenges and I can tell you, because you're young, there are going to be challenges that none of us here today would have imagined that you will be more prepared to tackle when they come. You came to SEPA to be surrounded by people like you, fellow students who are passionate and committed 
to try to make the world a better place. So today, I just want to say, stay in touch with each other. Support each other professionally moving forward. Help each other imagine new ways to contribute to making the world a better place. And as alumni, come back. It's really important. Share your experiences with future students, and you'll discover by listening to them that they'll help you reimagine the tasks that you face in your professional careers. Individual SEPA students are very good. I know this. But as your inspiring capstone projects have shown, you're much better together than you are alone. I wanted to conclude my remarks tonight uh, with the way I conclude every one of my classes at Columbia and at other schools where I taught, and I mean it. Columbia is a great university. Like you, I'm proud to have studied here. These are not borrowed threads. These are my own. I studied here as well. Columbia students are smart, they're driven, and they're accomplished. So it's quite obvious to me that as you leave here with your degrees, when you go out into the world, you are going to do very well. Please just remember to do good. Thank you. Thanks very much. Each year, SEPA gives special awards to students and faculty who have demonstrated excellence in a number of our program areas. In your programs, especially for the, the parents and the guests, uh, if you look on your programs, you will see the names of the recipients uh, who will be standing in a moment. I'm going to ask those recipients to stand as I name the award that they received. Um, and I am going to uh, start with the SEPA Award for Outstanding Teaching. Will the recipients please stand? Okay, you're going to get me in trouble. You know, we have a lot of awards here, so. <laughs> Congratulations. The PhD in Sustainable Development Award for Outstanding Advising. The Columbia Alumni Association Campbell Award. The Dr. Susan Aurelia Gittleson Award for Human Values and International Affairs. <laughs> the Harvey Picker Prize for Public Service. The Isaac Anderson Rauch Award for Excellence in a Capstone Project. The Leas Perry Award for Progressive Sustainability. The Raphael Smith Memorial Prize. Congratulations to all the award winners, and congratulations to the class of 2022. It's now my honor and pleasure to introduce our graduation speaker.
Today, we are honored to welcome Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, Permanent Representative of the United States to the United Nations, to speak to the class of 2022. <laughs> Ambassador Thomas Greenfield is a deeply respected public servant and seasoned diplomat who served 35 years in the U.S. Foreign Service and some of the toughest assignments at the State Department. She's quite simply one of the most admired career diplomats and leaders in State Department history. In my own time at the State Department, I recall that any time someone would mention her name, any of the Foreign Service officers who worked with me or for me, when her name was mentioned, it was always with deep respect. Among her prominent roles in her career, she served as Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs from 2013 to 2017, where she led the development and management of U.S. policy towards Sub-Saharan Africa. Prior to that, she held the position of Director General of the Foreign Service and Director of Human Resources, meaning she was overseeing the State Department's 70,000 person workforce. Her time in the Foreign Service includes an ambassadorship to Liberia, as well as postings in Switzerland, Pakistan, Kenya, the Gambia, Nigeria, and Jamaica, among other roles. On a personal note, I recall that when I was at the State Department in the East Asia Bureau, she was Principal Deputy Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. She was the highest ranking career official in that bureau. And our bureaus worked together to persuade China to change policy course and to support and actually contribute peacekeepers to the multinational peacekeeping force that helped end the genocide in Sudan Darfur. Upon her retirement from the Foreign Service, she served in the private sector and in academia, leading the Africa practice at Albright Stonebridge Group, and uh, holding the position of inaugural Distinguished Fellow in Africa Studies at the Institute for the Study of Diplomacy at Georgetown University. Following her confirmation by the Senate in February 2021, she returned to public service as permanent representative of the United States to the United Nations, you should know that this holds cabinet rank in the Biden administration. Ambassador Thomas Greenfield has been a constant public presence and a vocal advocate for Ukraine and for Ukrainian refugees following the Russian invasion of Ukraine. She holds a bachelor's degree from Louisiana State University and a master's degree from the University of Wisconsin where she spoke yesterday, I understand. She's the recipient of numerous awards and honorary degrees we're really grateful. If you understand how busy someone like the ambassador is, we're really grateful that she took our invitation and decided to come to Columbia University to speak to you all today. Please give her a very warm reception. Hello, class of 2022. You look so wonderful out there. Dean Christensen, distinguished alumni, faculty, students, and staff, it's an honor for me to be here with you today. And I wanna thank you, Dean Christensen, uh, for that gracious introduction. Most importantly, SEPA class of 2022, congratulations. Graduates, you've made it. The Columbia blue gown and cap you done are proof. The degree you'll receive, which I encourage you to frame before it gets misplaced and crinkled like mine of many years ago, is also proof. Your family, your friends, your supporters here today, and those watching us live stream from far are proof. And I know so many of you are too humble to take the time to praise yourself. But right now, you should go for it. Give yourselves a pat on the back and another round of applause. <laughs> okay. 
And of course, you should shower that same praise on your loved ones who helped make this day possible, who believed in you when you had two papers due and an exam to study for, but felt like there wasn't enough public's coffee at time in the world to get it all done. They deserve credit, so let's also give them a hand. All of you were so fortunate to have a community of people who had your backs, who helped you transition as you started this new chapter in your life, and who helped you adjust and pivot as you face challenges and doubts along the way. Perhaps for some of you, one of those challenges was coming to this amazing city, New York. New York is a very special place. But I have to be honest with you, the first time I came to New York, it seemed kind of daunting. And I'll tell you that first time was in 1976, before many of you were born. Uh, I grew up in a small town in Louisiana where everyone stopped on the streets to say hello. We smiled at each other. We acknowledged each other. Well, here in New York, that didn't go over so well. So when President Biden asked me to serve as our ambassador to the United Nations, I was filled with immense pride. But I also wondered if New York could ever feel like home for me. Well, over the past year and a half, I've discovered that in New York, anyone, anyone can belong, can find community, and can take part. I recently learned that New York is home to as many as 800 languages. You hear them everywhere, in the subway and on the sidewalks. And it's not just the different languages spoken here that makes New York special. It's the people. It's the perspective. It's the perspective that you find every single day. With all of that diversity comes a true diversity of thinking, a real marketplace of ideas. And to me, in this way, the UN embodies New York. It's a place where the entire world literally converges, where we're unafraid of new ideas, our vigorous debate, where member states, big and small, have a powerful voice and a single vote on the global stage. And of course, as the Dean noted, the UN and SEPA share a common history, two institutions born in the aftermath of World War II. In 1945, world leaders came together to establish the United Nations, a place where global issues could be worked out through diplomacy and not bloodshed. One year later, SEPA was founded, and its graduates embodying your mission, and I quote, to prepare diplomats, officials, and other professionals to meet the complex needs of the post-war, unquote. These ideas have furthered our goals at the UN and at public institutions everywhere. And I've seen the tremendous value of a SEPA education up close. In fact, I have many SEPA alumni on my team, including here with me today. Uh, many others working in the U.S. mission to the United Nations. And I'm not going to embarrass them by calling them out, although I, I thought about doing it. <laughs> but I know that they are proud graduates of this university. And I know that this university is proud of them. And it's thanks to them that every day we're able to promote human rights, we're able to advance peace and security and defend democracy at the UN and around the globe. And not to mention that they've helped me to feel at home in this city. Graduates, I know you two have found community here at SEPA and in New York, and I hope that you've encountered challenging ideas and you've learned how to meet people who are different from yourself. You meet them with kindness and generosity, 
with warmth and curiosity, with hospitality and an open mind. I hope you have gained some well-earned New York grit. And I hope you've learned to solve intractable problems and approach every challenge with determined optimism. Because we're going to need you. In fact, we do need you. The world right now is facing some truly sobering challenges. And you are the ones who will have to take them on. Look no further than the tragic toll gun violence takes in this country. Yesterday, we saw this with our very own eyes. And I'm deeply saddened and horrified by the unthinkable mass murder of innocent civilians in Buffalo, New York. How is it possible that people are targeted while they're just going out to do their daily shopping? How does this just keep happening in our country? White supremacist forces continue to inflict terror on black communities, and we have to stare them down. We have to act. Or look to Ukraine, where Putin's unprovoked, brutal invasion has displaced millions of people. Last month, I traveled to Moldova and to Romania, two countries that have accepted over a million Ukrainian refugees. I met hundreds of women and children and elderly Ukrainians who left their homes and their loved ones behind, not knowing if they would ever see them again. Many wanted to remain close to Ukraine, hoping that they would be able to return home soon, despite seeing all the devastation and destruction every single day. The Ukrainian people have won our hearts. They've won our hearts and our minds. They've won the hearts and minds of the world as they valiantly fight for their sovereignty for their dignity, and for their democracy, and for ours. And President Zelensky has shown the world what true leadership looks like. He has used his powerful voice and example to galvanize us to Ukraine's defense. And that's exactly what we have done at the United Nations, where we kick Russia off the Human Rights Council and 140 member states voted to condemn and isolate Russia. But, but make no mistake, it's not just everyday Ukrainians who bear the burden of Putin's war. It's journalists, too who are risking their lives to expose the horrors of this war. Tragically, at least seven journalists have been killed while covering Russia's war of aggression. And today, I'm thinking of Palestinian-American journalist Shireen Abu Akleh. Shireen was killed just days ago in the West Bank. And I, I met her. I met her during a trip to Ramallah last summer, and I instantly recognized that she was someone who was in the ring for all of the right reasons. There must be justice for her and for all journalists senselessly killed while during, doing their jobs. And let's not forget Russia's war of choice is also taking a toll on people well beyond Ukraine's borders. This war has exacerbated global food insecurity. That's because Putin's forces have prevented Ukrainian farmers from harvesting their crops and destroyed Ukrainian infrastructure and grain storage facilities. Russia has bombed ships carrying goods out of the Black Sea and blocked 
Ukraine's major ports, and we've seen reports of Russia stealing Ukraini Ukrainian grain. Ukraine was once the breadbasket of the world. Now its own people wait in bread lines, and people around the world, especially in African countries in the Middle East, will suffer, even starve, as a result of this brutal war. What's happening in Ukraine is truly a global crisis. And if the last few years have taught us anything, it's that most of our biggest challenges, most of our biggest challenges require global solutions and global leadership. COVID showed us that our own health is only as strong as the world's public health that if we want to defeat COVID-19 and prevent future pandemics, we can't just close our borders and hope for the best. We have to lead. We have to lead and we have to drive international cooperation and collaboration. Climate change. No one country can address the existential threat of climate change alone. You all know that. We need to work together before it's too late. And it's your generation and generations that come after you that will be the most impacted by rising temperatures and sea levels, by devastating natural disasters that we've already seen. On all of these issues and many more, I'm proud of the indispensable leadership that the United States working with our allies and our partners has demonstrated. But this administration will not solve all of these challenges outright. The fight to protect our planet, to safeguard democracy and human rights, to, as the UN Charter calls for, save succeeding generations from the scourge of war. These are long-term fights. And class of 2022, these are your fights. You will be at the forefront now. So if you take one thing away from my remarks today, let it be this, and I've said it before, we need you. We need your energy, your optimism, your commitment to justice, your global perspective. And you're ready. SEPA has provided you with the tools you need to succeed. So don't doubt yourselves. Know you will encounter challenges, but just remember that during your time here, you have been in training for just these kinds of moments. And of course, you've also been training for those challenging moments your entire life throughout your diverse and distinct lived experiences. My experience growing up poor taught me that adversity strengthened my resolve and it defined my values. And in my professional life, I learned a similar lesson from my role model and my late friend, Madeline Albright. Madeline's life was in a word, remarkable. She was forced to flee Nazi invasion and communist uh, oppression as a young girl but went on to reach the highest levels of government as a powerful crusader for democracy and for human rights. She didn't just break the glass ceiling. That lady shattered it. And in so doing, she redefined what's possible for those of us who follow in her footsteps. Her work left an indelible mark on our country and the world and even on this campus. After completing her PhD at Columbia and writing a dissertation on the journalists involved in the Prague Spring, she stayed deeply involved in this community. In fact, she spoke at this very commencement last year and she reminded graduates that we all have the power to make change. She said, and I quote, 
When the cynics tell us that our ideas are out of date, we reply that the future is ours to change, to shape, I'm sorry. Class of 2022, the world is yours. The world is yours to shape. It's ready for you. And I can tell you, you are ready for it. So don't wait. We're ready. So I'm telling you, <laughs> don't wait for someone to give you the keys. Open the door for yourself. You don't need anyone to open doors for you. Don't think that your time to make change will come down the road when you rise in the ranks or have more power of seniority. This is the time for you now. So take up the leadership mantle. And let me tell you, leadership comes in all shapes and sizes and from all kinds of backgrounds, as Madeline taught us all. Graduates, as you head out into the world, I want you to remember that your name is far more valuable than your title. And no matter what you do next, and I have no doubt that you all will do great things, you have a responsibility to take on the world's challenges. And to do so, I encourage you, do it with kindness and compassion. It is up to you to be strong, especially when your values are tested, and to always lead with empathy. Take advantage of the immense privilege that receiving this degree has bestowed on you and use your power, your ideas, your education, your voice to leave the world a better place than you found it. And I have to say that I regret that our generation did not always do that for you, but you have a chance to correct that wrong for the next generation. So go out there and make us proud and change the world. Congratulations, 2022. Thank you, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield, for those inspiring powerful words. It's my pleasure now to introduce Kirsten Imahir-Hiasen, Kirsten Imahir-Hiasen, who is the former chair of the SEPA Alumni Association, and she's a graduate from the SEPA class of 2003. Please welcome Kirsten. Thank you, Ambassador Thomas Greenfield and Dean Christensen. It is my great pleasure to be here today with the extraordinary class of 2022 to congratulate all of you and welcome you as SEPA's newest alumni. While graduation celebrates the completion of your degree, it also marks the beginning of your new engagement with the world beyond SEPA. Your SEPA education has equipped you with much of the knowledge and many of the skills necessary for success, but whatever your objectives, ultimately, it will be up to each of you to achieve. I'm pleased to tell you that SEPA's alumni community can help you. Your SEPA degree brings with it a unique network of more than 23,000 alumni from all over the world, including 160 countries, all of them united by their shared experience and the desire to make the world a better place. As the past chair of the SEPA Alumni Association, I welcome all of you to this vibrant and diverse community and encourage you to stay connected with each other and with SEPA. With this in mind, the SEPA Alumni Association is pleased to present each of you with a small graduation gift, which will be available at the reception immediately following the ceremony. We hope that this memento will evoke fond memories of your time here at SEPA and will remind you to stay in touch 
and keep us updated with your contact information and with any exciting or professional developments you wish to share. The SEPA alumni community is eager to know you and to help you, so please stay in touch and be involved with SEPA and play an active role in the Alumni Association. Connect with fellow SEPA graduates around the world or on the on online alumni community. Volunteer your time and insights with current and admitted students. Come back to campus for the annual Alumni Day and your class reunions. Join us for informed discussions and networking at Columbia and SEPA alumni events around the world. Most importantly, as you embark upon your newest journey, always remember why it was that you chose to attend SEPA and the remarkable faculty and staff who helped to guide you, the outstanding students who challenged or inspired you, and the loving family and friends who stood behind you. On behalf of the Alumni Association and SEPA alumni throughout the world, welcome to our distinguished community and congratulations again on your extraordinary accomplishment. It is now my privilege to introduce our next speaker, Xu Zhang, who served as president of SIPASA, SIPA's Student Association from 2020 to 2021. Prior to Columbia, she worked as an analyst at the United Nations Office for Project Services in New York. She graduates today with a Master of International Affairs degree and a concentration in international finance and economic policy. Please join me now in welcoming Xu Zhang to the podium and to SIPA's alumni community. Thank you. Thank you, Kirsten, for the kind introduction. All right, folks, we have made it yet. First and foremost, I want to thank all the faculty, students, and my dedicated CPASA board for your support during my time at the Student Association. I really appreciate the honor. But let me get started. As, pro as promised by the CPASA brochure, the past two years turned out to be a pretty unique journey. We have rich curriculum and often distinguished faculties, However, this is not the only reason that I believe made SIPA great. As I'm concerned, we went to the best school of Columbia University. Yes? <laughs> Who cares if other schools just had a $7 billion new campus, fancy furnitures, and free coffee machines? What they don't have is you guys, the SIPA students. Students with good hearts who strive to make the world a better place than they came in. It's you guys that made SIPA amazing. Today, we're here to celebrate the memories we have created in the past few years. The countless hours we spent studying together at the library, the beautiful nights we went to explore the city, the moment when we finally submitted our capstone project after a semester's hard work. You still remember it? <laughs> In the process, we became friends. Looking back the past few years, we took care of each other at times of need. We laughed and cried together. We cheered together for when reaching milestones in our life for moments like this one. In the process, we became family. Today, please have a look around you. We're here also to celebrate the people sitting next to you now, who have left an undoubtable remark on my heart and whom I believe will never forget. We all love our family wherever we come from, but at SIPA, we really have found another one. To the family members we left behind, some are here, some are home, and some may no longer be with us. I think I speak for all graduates when I say how grateful we are to have you in our lives. To many of us, this would not have been made possible without your support and understanding. We're graduating in a time with many urgent global events rising on the horizon. At the end of my speech, I would like to share with you three questions that have always guided me when in doubt. If not us, then whom? If not now, then when? 
If COVID-19 has not stopped us from submitting our micro and quant promises on time, then what will? <laughs> Class of 2022, we're the best there ever was and the best there will be. Congratulations, we have made it. Now, please welcome my fellow classmate, Lily Gabriel, to the stage. <laughs> Lily is receiving her Master in Public Administration in Economics and Political Development. Following graduation, she will be starting at TCW, where she will be working to help integrate environmental, social, and governance considerations in investment decisions. Lily, welcome. Wow. Thank you, Zhu, for that deeply moving address. And thank you, Dean Christensen, Madam Ambassador, and esteemed guests for celebrating this momentous achievement with us. And most importantly, thank you, Mom and Dad, for your lifetime of sacrifices. <laughs> My parents were freedom fighters in the Eritrean-Ethiopian War for Liberation. My mother was just 11, and my father was 16 when they both voluntarily left their homes to go fight alongside hundreds and thousands of Eritrean youth in the struggle for independence. My parents' generation of Eritreans sacrificed their adolescence, their educational opportunities, and the comfort and protection of their families for a much greater cause. Tens of thousands of air trains were killed. Countless villages and landmarks were set ablaze, and the economy was decimated. But in 1991, after 30 long years of bloodshed, Eritrea was finally a free country. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. <laughs> Believe it or not, this cohort of students reminds me of the spirit of the Eritrean freedom fighters. We were not intimidated by a global pandemic. <laughs> we were not deterred by a heightened geopolitical conflict among superpowers. And we refused to pay heed to the inflamed racial and political tensions that grip this country. I mean, despite the size and the stature of our enemies, we still signed up to fight. <laughs> and even as we stand defiantly in the face of much larger and much more powerful aggressors, this cohort continues to demonstrate the most humbling displays of dedication, sacrifice, and camaraderie that I have ever witnessed. Rather than being disheartened by the pandemic, we recognize that now more than ever, the world desperately needed a new crop of policymakers and change agents. That is dedication. We separated from loved ones in pursuit of a degree that will equip us with the skills and the conviction needed to make this world a better place for generations to come. That is sacrifice. And when crisis struck, we swiftly mobilized in solidarity with our Ukrainian classmates amidst Russia's military invasion. That is camaraderie. Words cannot express how proud I am to be a part of this graduating class. Congratulations, SIPA class of 2022. We did it. <laughs> I'll now turn it back to Dean Christensen. Thank you, Kirsten, thank you, Xu, and thank you, Lily, for those remarks. It's now time for us to read the names of each of our graduates by degree. 
To begin, I'm pleased to welcome Professor John C. Mutter. He's the director of the graduate studies, and he's also the P director of the PhD in sustainable development. John? Uh, you're here. I think you're here. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so yes, I get to kick off the boring part of this, where we just read out names. Getting a PhD at this university is not easy. I should know. <laughs> it's particularly not easy to get a PhD in the PhD program in sustainable development because we, we require our students to know two things at once. How the economy functions, how social systems function, and how the world functions in its physical form. That's not easy. To make it even more difficult, several people have, have noted that a certain virus came about and every autocratic leader in the world, whether they were elected or not, whether in very democratic countries or not, basically ignored it. What they couldn't control, they diminished. And because of that, COVID-19 was much worse here than it should have been. So what our students, you all, as well as the couple I'm going to mention in a minute, have seen, have achieved your work under very difficult circumstances. Um, and one thing you should all know is that none of the faculty let up. They didn't say, oh, it's, we'll give you an A, oh, come on, you know, it's COVID, uh, we've got to be good to you. We kept up exactly the same standards and you all kept up exactly the same standards. So I have only three people to mention, um, and I hope I haven't said too much already. I am going to uh, read them in order, but the opposite order of how they appear in your book. So the first I'll mention who is not here is Charles Taylor, a dissertation entitled Essays on Land Use and Agriculture. He's going to... Um, a postdoc position at UC Berkeley's Department of Agricultural and Resource Economics, and then he's also secured an assistant professor position at Harvard's Kennedy School of Governance. Did it all. Um, the next person I'll, I'll mention is uh, Claire Palandri. Her, t her dissertation title is Essays on animal farming and external validity of sustainable development. She has a postdoctoral position at uh, the Harris School of Public Policy at Chicago. Also a good placement. I mention this because PhD programs are always judged by the placement of their students. You know, where did you send people? So I have to mention this. And last, the person who is here, uh, <laughs> It is, is Matt Harrington. Um, <clears throat> his dissertation is titled Applications of Machine Learning in Sustainable Hydrology. And to a lot of people's astonishment, he is going to take a job as an applied scientist at Amazon. You know the company? <laughs> yes, that Amazon. <laughs> Congratulations, graduates. My name is Suya Yi. I'm the Associate Dean for Student Affairs. And it, is, and it is my honor and pleasure to read the names of the candidates for the degree of Master of Public Administration. Rachel Adeny. Sho Aihara. Abdul Aziz Al Humud. <laughs> Ivy Aku Alote. <laughs> Sanaria Al Shalal. <laughs> Margaret Anderson. <laughs> Giovanna Antoniazzi. <laughs> Soraya Azar. 
Fernanda Bachelet. <laughs> Madeline Baker. <laughs> Akilesh Varier. <laughs> Chenam Barshi. <laughs> Juliana Beal. <laughs> Rania Benkheda. <laughs> Emily Bolding. Catherine Hiroshige Born. Austin Barossi. Jada Danielle Bullen. Jia Cheng Tsai. Alexandra Carruthers. Bridget Chan. Dan Ran Chen. Kwan Kun Chen. Hao Chen. Ke Chen. Shi Chen. Bi Ying Cheng. Nisha Chojar. Trevor Cloen. Daniel Coletti. Maria Gabriela Coloma Ponce de Leon. Diraj Dewani. D. Kuhui. James Diddle. Courtney Ann Dobbs. Krishna Dosapati. Joey Fernandez. Jaime Fernandez Pontes Vinuela. Roxana Tatiana Flores Ibarra. Sasha Foster Andres. Yomna Hatim Gafar. Yang Gao. Amir Garib. Lily Gebrai. Anna Christina Graf. Vrinda Honda. Maria Harker Rozo. Miki Hayakawa. Boris Heyerman Hassenberg. Fang Ning Hu. Juliet Ihedio Hanma. Pavlo Ilyashenko. Courtney Jacobs. Joaquin Alfonso Buncio Javier. Han Tao Jiang. Abhinav Avinash Joshi. Nurbek Kabijan. Deepika Kalra. Kanakorn Kantaradar. Yulgantamir Kaltar. Rachel Kim. Zaki Klieger. Daniel Kutzen. Annabelle LaRose. Desmond Jamal Lee. Susie Lee. Margo Lerbet. Dan Yang Lee. Chen Yu Lee. Jia Xin Lee. Lin Ying Lee. Meng Wen Lee. Xin Ran Lee. Yifan Li. Cairo Liang. Liao Junzhe. And now I invite Professor Andrea Bubala to continue reading the names for our MPA degree candidates.
Sichu Lin, <laughs> Jing Shu Liu, <laughs> Yi Wen Liu, <laughs> Yu Tong Liu, <laughs> Paula Lottenberg, <laughs> Nathaniel Lowe, <laughs> Si Yi Lu. Katsuhiro Maeda, <laughs> Tianyu Mao, <laughs> Nathan Marks, <laughs> Jasmine McClam, <laughs> Elena Mitrevelli, <laughs> Andres Felipe Moncada Lopez. Kandil Munavar Hak, Monserrat Munoz Garcia, Nicolas Navas Munoz, Sabrina Otnes, Xiang Sing Pan. Young Se Peng, <laughs> Luis Gustav Perez Facuri, <laughs> Ruchita Pongulati, <laughs> Gilda Prifti, <laughs> Florentina Proceanu. Jiayu Chu, Tristan Quist, Samir S. J. B. Rana, Anna Rautenberg, Leanne Remen, Michael Ricciardi, Andrea Rojas Perez Palma. <laughs> Thomas Rowland. <laughs> Jadeep Salil. <laughs> Eduardo Saravalle. <laughs> Julia Serret Sonier. Thomas Shore, <laughs> Anna Siegel, <laughs> Chi Shao, <laughs> Abe Sharma, <laughs> Shefali Sharma, <laughs> Avanti Singh. Muskan Sofet, <laughs> Dion Sugrim, <laughs> Hannah Spirer, <laughs> Anna Rose Miriam Spitz, <laughs> Lindsay Joy Streeter, <laughs> Valentina Suarez Saye. <laughs> Jayur Sun Purvaja Sundar Si Yong Tan Serena Gabriela Tomei Elio Chan Sayaka Unzaki Sarina Dominique David, Ojani Pierre, Rufe Wolfrust, Jing Hong Wang, 
Ju Yuan Wang. Ron Hang Wang. Shudan Wang. Hey. Zhe Tian Wang. Colin Ward. Chuo Wei. Sebastian Welch. Ribut Vidarto. Mark James Wood. Muyan Wu. Yushan Shi. Jia Yu Shu. Ling Feng Shu. Luna Wen Shu. Xing Chu. Kai Shui. Chen Su Yang. Ching Ching Yang. Ling Lin Ye. Ye Surrey. Naomi Babireba Zabasaya. Joy Jong. Kyun Jong. Susha Dola Jong. Yu Jong. Eduarda Zogby. Congratulations, MPA class of 2022. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bill Emick, and I am the director of the EMPA program. And it's, <laughs> oh. I'll just step in. OK. <laughs> We're only kidding about that, all right? So, good evening everyone, my name is Glenn Denning, I'm the director of the MPA in Development Practice. It's my great pleasure to uh, present to you now the uh, courageous, caring, creative, and all-conquering MDP Class of 2022. <laughs> Fatima Al-Hashimi. Ishwa Bandi. Denise Becerra. Garrett Desmond Berghoff. Nadine Bibawi. Mia Chin. Hannah Clifford. Luisa Fruhoff. Kevul Gala. Lisa Garcia. Gabrielle Hayes. Catherine High Street. Zekun Huang. Elizabeth Hoot. Gerong Kelly. Minjun MJ Kim. Yechan. David Lee, Aaron Leonard, Elizabeth Logalbo, Stephanie Ma, Nathaniel Maikawa, Kadijatu Magasa, 
Michael Dalton McCarville. Emma Morgan. Lee Michelle Nasbom. Nathan Odendal. Jessica Peck. Julia Petzik. Diana Rincon. Maria Jimena Rojas Mendish. Eric J. Rosa Silva. Dante Salazar Ballesteros. Brian Sherrill. Vincent Tang. Huya Tausher. Liselle Vincent. Kevin Michael Vu. Yishuang Su. Amay Yadav. Good evening, everyone. My name is Patricia Mosser, and I am very proud to be the director of the MPA Program in Economic Policy Management at SEPA. Uh, and I'm really, really thrilled to introduce this outstanding and brilliant graduating class of 2022. Um, and they are Nagila Gafar Ali Abdul Rahim. Nirbek Abdubachayev. Amra Ahmad. Yusuf Al Ibrahim. Abdulaziz Al Dubai. Aramasele Alenke. Hashir Arif. Sorry, Marina Pornama Ayu. Tumor Kuyag Batsuri. Shea Bishnoi. Diora Bradford. Luciana Carmargo. Endrin Fazil. Yusuke Fuji. Ignacio Griffin. Tomoyuki Ida. Al Hassan Kalon. John Kuai. Brett Levanon. Jorge Lano. Laura Mesa. Azusa Miyako. Nguyen. Raghild Akar Nordang. Ibrahim Adrian Nugroho. Bratimi Oliteru Ogabegi. Hanjaz Patil. Zahir Saeed Saki. Bashiru Salami. Hayato Shimoyama. Noha Soleiman. Cindy Tin. Mosin Walid Tonio. Donyang Chu. Armine Yarlova. And last but not least, Yong Yin Chu. Congratulations, everyone. the right order. It's my honor uh, to recognize the graduates of the MPA in Environmental Science and Policy class of 2022. They are the 20th graduating class of this path-breaking program 
that is the only environmental policy program in the United States requiring a semester of environmental science and featuring a three semester workshop sequence in policy management uh, and uh, science as well. I'm confident that these spectacular graduates, their predecessors, and many of the others here today will do nothing less than save our planet. Let me start with the first, Namir Ahmad. Yaritza Anyuga. Annika Becker. Elise Bird. John Bivens. Morgan Boer. Blake Carroll. Kate Champion. Sarah Chin. Oh, sorry. Cassidy Childs. Jasmine Chu. Deanna Coleman. Haja Fatuma Ta Dumbuya. In absentia, Nicole Eli Eliashev and John Luca Fenton, right here. Wayan Brianna Fowler Puja. Molly Freed. Chelsea Gomez. Stephen Hart. Kerry Houlihan. Matthew Horn. Elena Ristuva. Willa Louisa Jones Irwin. Anupama Joseph. Rosie Kay. Avery Kale. Matthew Landon. Samantha Lang. Jacob Lessig. Kevin Liu, Alexa Lorillard, Maxwell Lulavi, Shrishti Mahajan, Matthew McDavid, Aidan McKean, Laura Miller, Megan Ort. Tessa Owens, Gianna Piracy, Likat Patel, Liza Roberts, Anishka Sachi Danu, Julia Safar Diana, Jordan Shenhar. Amelia Silverberg. Caleb Smith. Meredith Spector. Ranganat Srinivasan. Emma Sue. Liana Tong. Alila Tuzilin. Daniela Barone Ray. Nicholas Vanezia, Evelyn Vivar, Dengru Wan, Jeshin Carolyn Wang, Linda Wan, Kate Wister, Jia Shen Wu, Su Shen Yan. Chandana Yuku, Karen Zaklama, and Aaron Zweig. Good evening. I'm still Bill Emick. <laughs> Hopefully, I'm still head of the EMPA program. 
And I am very proud and honored to introduce the 22nd graduating class of the Executive MPA program. I'd like to say with all respect to our previous classes, this is the most extraordinary class in our history. And we'll begin with Saiku Baldi. China Camacho. Leslie Cornwall, Jolene Farrell, Sudeshna Ghost Harzra, Dylan Gickel, Tanya Grandios, Diana Gurevich, Derek Hansen, John Harper. Maria Jose Embet Hernandez, Mariana Herrera, Natalie Inagaki, Tiana Jovanovich, Catherine Kaiser, Rosa Kadir, Adrian Kenyon. Meiji Kowarik, Erica Lamb, Stella Lau, Lin Lee, Bayunyan Lee, Anna Marissa Lockman, Lutfala Lutfi, Bashar Makai, Diana Lawrence. Mesha, Milko Mugva, Holly Marshall, Felicia Malongo, Floviana Moreña, Bridget Catherine Murphy, Elizabeth Ogunwa, Meredith Perlamo, <laughs> Chung Pong, Elizabeth Ann Powell, <laughs> Lisbeth Santana, <laughs> Fridelisi Santos, <laughs> Charlie Santos, <laughs> Annalib Shaw, <laughs> Michael Shelter. Emily Shepard, Sadra Tulahar, Alice Viole, Tachuku Omeje, Shin Wang, Jin Shang Zen, Ao Zhang, Gu Hong Zhang. Oh, <laughs> Mark Anthony Wilson. Good evening and congratulations to the class of 2022. My name is Hazel May, I'm the Associate Dean for Academic Affairs and it is my honor and pleasure to start the names, reading of the names for the candidates of the degree of Master of International Affairs. <laughs> Sami Manes Adisi Sternberg. Naif Alcatran. Sarah Al Shawish. Eliza Alvarez Schilling. Nabila Amasi. Lena Akawi. Iskanda Atajano. Okay. 
Rosa Azene. <laughs> Alaoni Pekun Pekare. <laughs> Julia Beheta Uweza Bandiera. <laughs> Natasha Barrientos. <laughs> Celia Becherel. <laughs> Shavon Bell. Alison Berman. Sean Blanco. Seth Borden. Nicholas Boyce. Victoria Charlotte Browning. Gabriela Jimene Calles Monsivez. Rachel Corsi. Selim Sevikel. <laughs> Tristan Chabas. <laughs> Clarissa Chandu. <laughs> Alexis Cheney. <laughs> Brennan Phillips Chess. <laughs> Hana Wan Choi. <laughs> Lo An Kim Chu. <laughs> Nicholas Chun. Eli Clemens, Mark Curran, Emmanuel Cousin, Noor Dabusi, Ophir Diane, Van de Mukadichian, Stephen Deshena, Nate Edwards. Kate Etu, Dina Noor Faid, Reed Fennerty, Manshuan Gao, Dipshika Ghosh, Shailen Claire Gian Petroni, William Hamilton Gifford, Kutsure Jime. Christoph Hessler, <laughs> Alanud Hamad, <laughs> Tali Hausa, <laughs> Catherine Hendren, <laughs> Justin Holly, <laughs> Hei Jung Hao, <laughs> Ali Javahari, <laughs> Nakisha Jones, <laughs> Caitlin Yozan. Joanne Jong, <laughs> Tumai Kafri, <laughs> Hei Jo Kang, <laughs> Hannah Katz, <laughs> Kohei Kobata, <laughs> Sean Keeley, <laughs> Tarak Kenny Shawa, <laughs> Esther Kim. Sonia Yuha Kim, Maria Kobayashi. Thank you. And now I ask my colleague, Professor Tom Grohl, to continue the reading of the names of the Master of International Affairs. Cyril Kretz, Yongshi Kwon, Barbara Lentz. Singmin Helen Lee. Simon Tobias Wolf Lehmann Leo. Gisela Levy. James Lewis. Doris Lee. Janing Lee. Yun Liang. Jongmuk Lim. Yi Shou Lin. Yi Liu. Lu Ye. Oliver Mayers. Asha Mayer. Will Mendoza. Galila Michael.
Ananya Mishra. Daniel Patrick Murphy. Paolo Musto. Nicholas Mood Tracy. Christina Nedelkova. Danielle Neftin. Lauren Ann Newby. Aihan Ni. Sijun Ni. Anastasia Nicolazzo de Bamon. Matthew Palmer. Kavi Patel. Andre Patsov. Govind Ramagropal. Kelsey Ray. Clark Reeves. Matthew Samuel Ray Show Cruz. Michaela Roberts. Luna Reese. Allison Ryan Mosley. Mohammed Saud. Hanako Sazaki. Hiroyuki Shiboya. Pranav Shivanra. Eleonora Smiriglio. Sean Steinberg. Rishika Surya. Matthew Swain. Yukiko Fukushima Tachiban. Tomohiro Takaheda. Carolina Tamajo Ogas. Rachel Tang. Faria Tasnim. Michael Thompson. Natalia Trio. Vasiliki Sinatis. Alchan Hassan Valley. Shilpa Anajandi Vinigalanda. Pedro Formitak. Serena Wang. Irina Shibata Watanabe. Catalina Wittmann. Joseph Lawrence Wyman. Sarah Rose Williams. Abby Walter. Bingyu Yan. Yoto Yokakawa. Chu Chow. Sway Chow. Sin Yu Chow. Xiaoming Chu. Ruby Chow. Congratulations, MIA 2022.
Uh, congratulations again to all the graduates. I recall a, a farewell that a good friend of mine used to say when I was at MIT, and he always parted ways by saying, be brave. So all of you, please be brave, and please join us for a reception on Ansel Plaza. <laughs>